Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to part four of this week's episode of Leading Our Own Way. We're getting into some valuable insights from this week's guests that you can definitely apply to your own journey. Please definitely stay tuned for advice and inspiration that can help us all. If you missed the first part of the week in part one, two, and three, definitely go back. The show notes should be filled with all the links, so go and click on them if you need to catch up. Also, definitely subscribe to the channel and all the other ones if you can. It's going to really help the show. But for now, enjoy the rest of the story. And then we had other neighbors that were incredible. So, so Dee, Dee thought, she said, look, you know, this, it's, it's taken a, a whole village to do this. So we had this huge square table. It fit like 10 or 12 people around it. So, she, so Dee invited all our neighbors. And then she divided all the stacks of checks of mail so everybody could open up and have the experience to see what they played a part. Wow. And then you know what was amazing? Deanna. D D opened the very last check and it was for twenty thousand dollars. And this was like But my, wow. my former bride, it just she's um so this whole time I'm I'm mentally ill. I mean, just call it what it is. And high functioning. Yeah. Um, From what? I, I well, I think I think I think From it was what? I think it was the rape. I mean, I Andy, yeah. they, that that it still impacts me. I I hate my body. I mean, no, it, it just I I if I could take a shower with my clothes on, brother, I would. Like I just I don't. I mean, for me, I I do not like seeing. I have to look at myself right here. I hate it. So, so we're cruising along, and the whole time I'm still, I have this depression, and then and there was stress because you know the sanctuary had grown really large. Um, just everything together was not good. Mm. I mean, we're still doing great work. I mean, the, the animals yeah. never suffered in any way, shape, or form. Mm. Um, I mean, at one Would point, like... at, at one point, the animals had enough food to eat. We had to go get food stamps for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. It, which I'll never forget my first experience. God put an angel in front of me. So this is taking a, this is all taking a mental toll on your mental wellness, isn't it? Yeah. Did this affect your marriage? Yeah. Is that ultimately why you and Dee broke up? Yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, I, I, I look at it. I, I, I didn't have the ability back then to reframe situations like I do now. I wish I did. Um, <laughs> She's, she's, yeah. How did the angel present in your life at that point? Did you just mention? For the, for the food stamp? For, yeah. So, so the food stamp is a card. And this was getting back like eight, must have been 2008 or so. And so I'd never been on food stamps before. And um, so I don't want to go to a grocery store. We were pretty well known. At that point, I mean, you're in USA Today, and you know every local. You know, you're pretty well known. They know who, they know who D. So my middle name is Wood. People knew me as Woody. There's still people. My brothers call me not my dad, but the other two will call me Woody. Um, so I went to a grocery store, Andy, way away. So go through, and I got my cart all piled up, and I go to use the card. I don't know how to use it, and there's people behind me, and I'm. Oh my God. And I mean, you'd like the stress is just, and this woman, I'll never forget. Her name was Abby. She looked, she said, honey. And she had this big smile on her face. She said, honey, is that the first time I'm using your card? And I didn't say anything. She said, oh, give me that card. We see all, we see this card all the time. And she shows me how to use the card. The card. We finished the transaction, and I'm just about to leave. And I'll never forget, she touched my arm like it was like an angel's touch. And she said, sweetheart, 
There's no need to be ashamed. We all need help sometimes. No. Couldn't believe it. So yeah, that's, that's all we where I went to use the car. I mean, and that's the you know that's the sort of thing, Andy, that just like there's some good people out there. Oh man, I can tell you, man, I got I got so many stories to tell you. So, well, I mean, so things continue to get bad. Yeah, and then again, Chef Chang, when you're depressed, you're convinced that everything you think is true that. D will be fine, and Sanctuary will be fine, and his brothers will be fine. So, so where does that go before 2011? Then does that does that Sanctuary close? Is no, it was still going when I was going to kill myself. Right. Okay. So in the so aftermath, let's go to that. Oh no, sorry, go. On. Well, so so I and I drive to the bridge. Can you talk to us about where this bridge is and and because sure. so, I've, so, I've seen I've seen a pi- I've seen a picture of it. Um, it so I'm, it's it's actually I'm going to get that picture by the way. The fourth tallest bridge in the United States. <laughs> so just to give you a reference, so this the Forest Hill Bridge is 730 feet from above the what's the North Fork of the American River. That's 500 feet further off the ground than its more famous more famous cousin in San Francisco, which is only two hours away. So it is high take and i knew it was going to take my body seven and a half seconds to fall 730 feet how many seconds seven and a half so parked made my way to the midpoint pressed myself up the barrier hit me right across the this part of my chest and arm out like this so now i'm looking Mm. at the the river and then, I don't know how, how long I'm there. Thank God it was long enough where someone saw me, because the bridge has a reputation. How does it? And, yeah. And an officer approached me, and he made connection. And there was an initial, I don't know what the initial back and forth was, but I remember the first question. And his first question, Andy, was, David, and every every word he used was perfect. David, would you please, as opposed to David, hey, tell me, David, would you please tell me what does it feel like to be depressed? He said that to you off the bat. He asked. How did you know your name? Well, no, as I say, there was some initial back and forth. Oh, sorry, yes. Yes. Which yeah. I don't remember that 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 part doesn't stick in my mind. This part yeah. does, of course. Yeah. And it, and it's such a brilliant. And so when I teach, when I go and present to police officers, I say because there there's one line of thinking, and I'm not blaming anybody. There's one line of thinking that suggests you don't talk about the feeling that they're having in the moment because that's just going to make it worse. And what I would say is, I disagree with that. Talking about conversation, about how you feel, is one of the most effective ways to dissipate the intensity of what's going on. And when someone feels seen, heard, and valued, now what you've done is you've created a connection. Now what you've done is you've actually brought this little thing called hope into the picture. The feeling that what is wanted can be had. And so we went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And the man was a phenomenal listener. And there's a great quote I'm listening from a woman. She's a doctor, Dr. Rachel Naomi Remen. She says, our listening creates a sanctuary for the homeless parts in another person. So the last thing he said, actually, the last thing he asked was, would you please come with me? They see a lot of time. I mean, a lot of times that's the first question that that they're going to ask. But you don't have any connection yet. Yeah, you don't ask that question yet. But when you when you take the time, I don't know how long we we're there. You take the time to develop the question or, or develop the connection. 
And I have this some semblance of hope that what is the feeling that what is wanted can be had. Yeah, I'm ready to take an off the bridge to an emergency room and then to a psych ward for 15 days. And incredible experience there. I mean, people are great. Let's go back to the morning of that day. How, how did you wake up? What, when did you even contemplate that day? Was it the day oh, before? Was it weeks no. before? Or was it just this, that morning? No, 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 no. That had been a recurring thought. I don't know. I mean, hundreds of times. Why that day? I don't, I, you know, I just because I, I, couldn't, I couldn't handle the pain anymore. The pain of? Just this, the searing emotional pain. It's, it's, it's depression. It, it's. Well, we in, we're in the space where where you have come, you have convinced yourself that it will never be. Not only will it never be better, it will never be any different. Mm-hmm. And and then the, the feeling that goes with that, and and depression is. You know, depression. Depression has a, a physical pain to it as well. You know, and then there's the aspect of fatigue. And I mean, for me, when I'm depressed, my my vision, like literally, brother, it like it, it like narrows. You know, it's almost like it's like this, it's like everything. And if you think about, it impacts everything. There's every single part of you is is impacted. It's like just getting the crap kicked out of it, and you just like I, I cannot do this anymore. Yeah, and and then you you balance that with, and it's okay because every, my God, everybody's going to be so much better. You can you you you're convinced. Do you, can you remember what made you get into the? to the truck the car that day to go to the bridge which because i believe it was what 20 minutes away from where you lived yeah can you remember why you got into the truck that day well because i i mean why i got in was to go to the bridge but i know but why why get into the truck to go to that bridge that particular day versus another day i just think i mean and it it was just i mean it, it was so the depression was just got worse. Yeah. And and for me, and I don't know if this, you know, and I've not read this from other people, so I don't know if it is or not. For me, depression, in, 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 part and parcel with it is terrible self-hatred. I mean, really, 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 really bad. Like, yeah. you know, just like, you know, now... I still have issues with my relationship with myself, but you know, my body, that's a whole nother thing. But in the worst parts of the depression, how I feel about my body is how I felt about myself. Yeah. And here I am and, and, and it makes here I am taking care of dying animals. And I think and I think I'm I'm absolutely like the worst person on the planet. Well that just shows you where your mind mind's really at, isn't it, versus reality. I suppose. Yes, yeah. Did did you leave a note for anybody? I did. Where did you put it? Around the dash of my truck. And you put your keys on top of the note, didn't you? I did. Did did I did I hear incorrectly or correctly that you did something? Do you leave the door open? I just made sure the door was open. Why? Well, I just wanted them to be able to to get the key. I didn't want them to have to. Break into oh, the I see what you mean. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I thought there was something behind that. Okay, I see what yep. you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, how long had you been on top of the bridge before, if you can remember? I know it's faded, and I'm yep. I'm sorry if I'm going deep, but how no, long we on the please. how long we on the bridge until the the police officer came? I'd like to think it was somewhere within the realm of thirty minutes. Wow. Because if you just think about. And I, I don't, I mean, and I'm, I'm, I don't have a memory of it, but what I'm thinking is, okay, so someone calls 911 mm. and then they come, um, you wouldn't, yeah, it had to be 
at least 20, I would think. Was the cars passing when you were on the edge? Oh, absolutely. No, I felt Did anyone I've... stop? Mm-mm. And I don't no. Yeah, and then well. you know, could feel the bridge bounce and, and everything else. And yeah. Yeah. But somebody called. You must have done, yeah. Yeah. I, I've seen the picture. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it on here. Uh, I, I have the ability now to put a picture up onto here, if that's okay with you, just to, oh, so people course. can visualize yeah. it. Uh, and and it, it looks, oh my God. I mean, it looks stunning. Oh, it's a, it's a gorgeous piece of uh, architecture. I, I've yeah. And even it. just the hills around it is oh, stunning. Oh, it's beautiful. But I can see how high it is. And I, I'm tr- I, I, from that moment of watching you talk and looking at the picture on, on the website, I was, I was trying to visualize like, a pit, my me in your head that day, you know, and uh, you can never comprehend it, of course. Um, so you no, spent 50, 15 days mm-hmm. in the ward and then yeah. did some amazing things. How did life look from after that? From that point onwards, did you then decide to go in the direction of motivational speaking and oh, suicide no, no, prevention? No, no, no. no, good Lord, no. No, no. Now was in the realization that you know, so there's, you know, my marriage is going to end. Yeah. Um, you know, we're going to have to uh, take apart the sanctuary. Where the hell am I going to go live? So ultimately, Did the attempt live. then, sorry to cut you off, did the suicide attempt, was that a catalyst also to the breakup with Dee? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. And that yeah. was much more on me than Dee. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, it, it I mean, yeah, so and so ultimately ended up, you know, lost the house and, and the sanctuary. Um, I don't. I then went. I because I, I was in still in mortgage, but I still must have been doing mortgage work. But then I went. I think I went to work for a new company. But at one point, but there was a period where first I had to kind of like get stable because I had had a complete breakdown. I mean, here I was just. I kill myself. It's 15 days in a psych ward. Um, so I went to go live with my, my two brothers, um, which was incredible, and lived with them for years. Mm-hmm. And then got, then got into, I think I might have switched companies or anything, but then really landed with a great, great, great company, awesome boss, really, really phenomenal people in mortgage. Um, and so kind of was getting my, and then doing therapy, you know, doing support groups and and doing all kinds of stuff. And then (laughs) now I had done, you know, some amount of speaking at the sanctuary because we were, I needed to raise money. So I wasn't a, you know, like never given a speech type, but still not. So at one point I was doing some work. Um, in the county where I live, in a support group or something, and someone said, there's a speakers group. And I said, what's that? He said, well, you go to different agencies and maybe community organizations who want to hear about people who are, you know, in the process of battling mental illness and, and they've had some success. So you tell your story. And I remember thinking, how would I do that? Like that—that that is the dumbest thing in the world. I, I, why? So you're gonna tell me? Yeah, I lost my house. My, you know, lost my marriage. Gonna jump off a bridge, and like, why would I tell that? And he said, "We'll pay you a hundred dollars." I'm like, done. <laughs> okay, let's <laughs> let's let's. And li- literally, I would love to say it was more altruistic than that. That was it. And so started to give talks to, it was, it was, it was people within uh, different agencies within the the county government, Placer County, a great organization. Mm -hmm. And then might be some schools and some, so it just started to, you know, do it. And I'm like, okay, it's not bad. And then at one point, I don't know when it was, at one point, I think I decided, well, let me, let me try this like, like on my own, truly. And I think I started with like there's thing called Rotary Clubs, which is a civic club, like a Rotary Club, um, just small, you know, organizational things. Maybe a school, stuff like that. Doing it on my own and you know charging just a little bit of money, and then got some experience doing that. And then so it just 
and I'm still doing mortgage, still doing therapy and meds and everything else. Um, then it just, it just <clears throat> kept getting bigger and bigger. And then in 2018, you know, I knew, of course, knew, but everybody knew about TED Talks. And I just, I typed in open call for TED speakers and found this one in Los Gatos, which is right by San Francisco. And so I filled out the application and everything else. And I thought, oh, Lord, we're never going to, you know, I don't have a chance in hell. <laughs> I can tell you exactly where I was. And the email came in and it said, Andy, congratulations. You've been selected to be a TEDx speaker. And I literally screamed. I was wow. so freaking I, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, I, I, it was almost like, like looking, you know, like, are you sure you have the right person? And this was, I had no demo reel or I had nothing. I mean, yeah, well, and, it, and from that, you was named what the twenty twenty one mental champion by the prestigious Steinberg Institution as well, wasn't you? Being recognized as a as a that, global thought leader that really launched it. I mean, it was really that oh. it was it was in two thousand eighteen. It really just kind of took off, yeah. and, and and yeah, and it's still really up until yeah. I mean, especially the last three years have been really 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 good um and then Amazing. you know i'm in this there's a lull right now you're like okay yeah, but i have but, this whole experience of ect and deep in relationship. it's probably the blessing in disguise right no, no, it's no, giving you the time it is i agree yeah. yeah it's a blessing in disguise it sounds going off everything you said and it's been able to allow you to connect with the loved ones um which is i think the the, the, I live my life by four C's, right? So, and I got, again, I got this off the Die of the CEO podcast, but the four C's, one being connect, the first one being connect, and that's everything you've just, you've just mentioned there. Um, the second one being um, uh, contribution, giving to the world. That's what you're doing. Mm. I feel that's what I'm doing with leading our own way. Absolutely. The third C, cope, which we touched on before, sleep, mindfulness, exercise. And then the fourth C, I've gone blank. <laughs> oh, oh uh, cooking. You're waiting for me to do it. I, I've, gone, I've gone blank, but it's cook, you know, and, and you've brought this. I wrote these notes down before what you mentioned in your, in your, in what you said earlier, and even in your video, in your talks. But that, that's the fourth C is cook. I, I've changed my life to go to Whole Foods. I mean, I still eat a bit of chocolate here when I'm moving out with the kids and stuff like that. I'm, I'm not saying I won't have a McDonald's once every other month, every other month, you know, because it's a, it's just an easy one. Or sure. we throw some nuggets in the cooker. But I, we, I used to eat that shit every day, mm. right? So I've gone massively changed my diet to Whole Foods. You know, anything that grows from the ground and anything that eats from the growing ground, and put all those four C's together. It comes back to what you said before. I've got the most clarity. I'm the most present and I've reduced my workload to being a casual teacher. I'm not a full, I am a full-time teacher, but I'm a, uh, and I'm a, I work every day, but I've gone from a contracted teacher with all the, the, the stuff that goes around with that job that makes it quite stressful because I can't give what I want to the job. So I've become a casual teacher, which means ultimately we're losing out financially, but we're gaining it with our emotional currency. Mm, I get right? it. Right. And um, and I go back to those four C's. And I really, if I keep into that those pillars, I, I really feel like a, a I don't know, a more all round girl. Can I go and get a coffee the same as I used to? No. Can we do afford takeouts? Really? No. Can we afford to go on holiday? No. But I do believe something good will come from this. I, I, you know, brother, I mean, I, I, some, yeah. something's already coming. I'm, I'm happy. Uh, but I mean, further, you know, I'm being patient with leading our own way. And I'm meeting wonderful people like yourself who have got a hell of a journey and, uh, and so much to give. I mean, I'm looking at your thingy right now, what you sent me. And I just look at the pictures that are at the side. You've got your NASA. You've got your, your, your <laughs> Stutter Health. You've got your Boston University, U.S. Army. Um, you're doing unbelievable things. But you're right. You have, you, you have to put yourself first. First, it's like the airplane. Going back to what you said at the beginning of the plane, um, thing, you I go with the airplane scenario that everybody yep. uses, right? Yep. You have to put your own mask on before you can look after everybody else. Otherwise, they're gone anyway. No. So, 
you know, if you need if you need to take a pause flying to Korea and Japan and all these wonderful countries, again, that's on this list, India and so on. Um, you don't have to fly there. You could do it remotely if you want to do, if it means keeping your own mental wellness into check. No, and I think and I think, brother, you're right. And I think that this this most recent experience, yeah, and that's and that's a perfect analogy. Just say, hey, you know what? Been on the road too much. I can do this virtually. Yeah. Which and it doesn't much- mean don't go back to it occasionally. No, exactly. Exactly. You know, just no. don't go everywhere and get off a flight and then the next day fly again. No, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, uh, mate, you've been on one a hell of a journey, man. And, and, and I love your positivity. I think what's your goal going forward in terms of falling in love with your, 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 your body again, your mind, your presence? I know you don't look in the mirror. Um, and I really, really want you to look in that no, mirror because you trying. don't see what you're doing to the world, my friend. But like no. you say, you've got to put the world on pause and just go on you for a moment. Right. If, have, what is your goal in that regard? I, just to do what you're saying, just to try to take it a day at a time. And, and, to do, and, you know, my beloved is there is no better person in the world for me to be with. Yeah. You know? And I've been, yeah. been blessed to. There's really been been three three ladies. So I had, had Deanna, um, and between Deanna and Summer was Carrie. Carrie is incredible. Just texted care today. Uh, tell her I love her. It just it just worked out that we didn't you know didn't go to the next level. But yeah. Um, and then I have Summer. So I just you know it's three women. Amazing, extraordinary, and I'm still. Thank God, I'm still closely connected with all, with all three. Amazing, yeah. and that's unusual. Unfortunately, I hate to say that's unusual, no, I, and, it's, and it's great that you do, though, and it's great that they respond the same as you, right? And you, they can oh, have they that do. connection oh, with my, you too. I can show you, yeah. I mean, it, it's you know, I have to to look at at my last um, text from from D. So here, here's an interesting story. Um, so. At one point, wanted I wanted to get. It had been a while since I had a Boston puppy, and so I wanted to get a puppy. And so, so got this puppy, uh, named her Heaven, and just like fell in love. Oh, it's a, it says the H is Hope, Harmony, Hope, Harmony, and Heaven, and Heaven, heaven. just like and Heaven, spicy and everything else. And so then we got, um, we got Percy, and. It was weird. I've never had, and I've had probably, I don't know, like 25 or 30 Boston Terriers. I mean, I know the breed. Excuse, well. me. God, excuse me. All of a sudden, Heaven is like like attacking like Summer and the kids and everything else. And I'm just like, uh-huh. this is not like a Boston. This is so weird. So this goes on. I don't know what to do. You know, you know get like a healer and all this other stuff and just nothing's changing. And it's like, and then the realization comes is that heaven needs to be an only dog. Just, you know, some dogs need to be an only dog. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I don't always have great ideas, but, but this one, then it occurred to me, I'm like, oh my goodness, maybe heaven could go to Deanna. And so Dee lives in Texas. So I text her and I said, hey, sweetheart, you know, let's kind of explain everything. Well, for long, here, heaven and I, are on a plane together, heaven's inside with me, flying to Texas. And then heaven goes, and I I drop heaven off, and it's tough. It's it's really hard. Mm -hmm. Well, it it has worked, Andy, in ways Mm -hmm. I cannot even fathom. It is so perfect. Those two, and she, I mean, Deanna has thanked me, you know, a zillion times. And it just, and I said to Summer the other day, I said, and this to, to what you, something you just said, I said, I said, you know what, babe? I actually think my job was to find heaven so I could get her to Deanna. Because it is, Andy, it is just like, it's perfect. Yeah, perfect. I mean, she's just, yeah. Um, Talking about your connection with some of the women, there's another special person that you get a little bit upset about, and it, I got it from your video. Um, Natalie and her note, and I know you've got it there. <laughs> Put Natalie and her note into context for the for the okay. viewers. So Carrie, my beloved, who's still super, super close. I mean, literally, we just texted today. 
Mm-hmm. Um, Will Stinker is in Italy right now on vacation, by the way. Very she cool. is a chief marketing officer and just one of the best human beings on the planet, with, without a doubt. So Care has three beautiful daughters. Michelle's the oldest, Natalie's the middle, and Lauren is the youngest. And so I became super, super close, bonded, very, very integrated in all the years and still close to all the girls now. So there was a time when Care and I were together that I was really depressed. Yeah. Uh, and, the, and the girls knew my, my circumstance. And so I came to my car one day when I was depressed and there was this note. Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.